Hey again, everyone. Um, today we're going to try to put everything we uh, put together, everything we did in the last few videos, to get the uh, the, res the classical result of the black body radiation problem, which is the ultraviolet catastrophe, as it's called. The law itself that we're going to be deriving is the Rayleigh genes law. If you want to look it up. Um, but so far we have derived the multiplicity of the modes, as I'm calling it, in our cavity, as well as through the equipartition theory, um, the average energy per mode. So um, to get the result in the standard format, we have to do a, just a little bit more manipulation on this. First of all, right off this, right off the bat, I'm going to take our modes and we're going to divide by volume. And basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to move, remove any physical quantities that could allow an integration of this to go to infinity. Okay, so now we've, now we've got a per volume quantity of modes. The next thing that we're going to do is want to get um, dn by d lambda because on a per lambda basis, and I'll show you how I'll write this. We'll start out, we'll do dn v the derivative with respect to lambda. Okay, so we get, and it's really the magnitude. I don't, I don't, um, we're not, oh, by the way, a lot of this, this lat, latter stuff comes from hyperphysics. So I highly recommend you check out their website for this derivation. But a lot of these, these finishing touches, uh, these final steps come, come from their website, in, in my understanding of it anyways. So um, actually, and there's one other article I might post. There's one other article, there's an article found that also does most of the steps of this. Um, so when we take this derivative, we get um, 8 over 3 pi. The um, negative 3 comes down, so we get negative 3, and then uh, 1 over lambda to the 4. So we get, in the magnitude sense, we get 8 pi, um, is it? Yeah, it's just 8 pi, 1 over lambda to the 4. Okay. So a few more things we need to do to normalize this thing. Okay, so in the normal way the answer is given, we are going to look at basically the power radiated by this thing. So we know we have our black body, which I'm going to draw as a sphere for now, and I understand we didn't drive it that way, but that's just what I'm going to do for now. So we, we've all the properties inside this thing we've looked at in pretty great detail. You know, all the crazy waves and the modes and... All that stuff has been looked at. What we want to do now is say this thing is going to radiate in all directions. Okay. Um, let's let's find out how much that radiation is on a on a per unit basis. Okay. So if we look at a way way out here, maybe if we have a delta x, this is an area. Okay. This is an area A, and this is a delta x. We want to ask how much of that light, or maybe you could think of it as flux in the electric world, how much of that is getting through? So in the general sense, it may not be A necessarily. This is also A here. Maybe I'll remove that over there. In the general sense, you might have a um, sort of at an angle here, where this is A and this is uh, theta, some angle. And this is theta, okay? So what you might get is actually this quantity here, which is a cosine theta. And then also the light rays are not going to be, um, the light rays coming into this guy are also going to be at an angle. So we can do some, some things with, you know, angles, basic geometry. And uh, this, this light speed is actually C cosine theta. So in our outer diagram, basically to get the volume, you're going to go A times delta X. This is a volume of this region. We're going to divide it by delta T, yeah? Divided by delta T, volume over time, and then we want our energy. So I'll just call this E um, ED, maybe energy density there, where this is in, um, it, at a minimum, it's in joules per meter cubed. 
but there's actually there's a little bit more going on here than this. It's um, it's also per wavelength, but we're going to hold off on that fact. There's another factor that we need to include here, and that is all of this only accounts for half of the radiation, because in this front plane, in this front plane we get half, and then the back plane they get another half. Okay, so this is uh, like I said, a lot of this comes from hyperphysics, but this is my understanding of it. Um, so we take this down, we get half, all right, and then our um, energy density, which is going to be this quantity here times kT, times kT, times kT. So we get 8 pi over lambda to the fourth times kT, okay, and then, oops, our last factors here, well, A is actually going to be, maybe I'll call this uh, A prime, A prime, um, A cosine theta. Sure, I'm, my notation here is, is pretty bad, so you're going to have to forgive me. But basically, this, this A gets projected down, and we get A cosine theta, A cosine theta. Um, delta X is CT, delta X equals C delta T. And our, our projected speed is this guy. So it's C cosine uh, delta, sorry, um, theta. And then delta T all over delta T. Okay, so now we reduce this quantity to, four, uh, sorry, 4 pi kT over lambda to the fourth. And then we get A cosine ac cosine squared theta all right because because these guys canceled like i said these are the final steps to get the result in the in the form um, that's that's cited also th this is important because physically what we're doing here is we're removing all other quantities that may give rise to um to to this thing going to infinity so we're stripping away everything else and we're just asking on a very very much a per unit basis what happens all right so a little bit more work to do we're going to divide out by area so this is going to be a power density so to make things even more interesting this is going to be now a power density so that is in standard units would be watts per meter squared so we get four oops 4 pi kT C over lambda to the fourth cosine squared theta. Now, what is the average of this quantity? This is the last step. The average of cosine squared, well, cosine squared just looks like this, um, and this is 1 and 0. The average is half. So what we get is um, 2 pi kT c over lambda to the fourth so um this this is the result as it's as it's called and i'm just looking up the symbol right now but i think the symbol they use is b the spectral radiance as a function of wavelength um yeah so that's that's what this quantity is called but let's not forget all the all the steps we took to get here um this is the per wavelength um the energy was the energy was calculated on a per volume so it was energy density multiplied through by this volume here that we constructed that we crafted um and we get this result okay so this is not uh this doesn't show you anything crazy yet it doesn't seem to the equivalent result which i'm going to i'm not going to derive it's it's just as simple to derive Instead of taking the derivative with respect to lambda, you take the derivative. You take this derivative with respect to frequency. If you do d n, uh, d n b by d mu, um, you will get. And just to look it up, it's two v two pi v squared, two by sorry mu squared or nu nu squared k t k t over c squared. And um, I think another way you can write this is that du, maybe du, is d lambda 
or d d new okay so why is this problematic well if you notice this is a function which cannot be integrated over all frequencies. Okay, so this is our frequency axis. This is the, the U or U, the special U we created that I've defined many times. Um, this, this thing, you cannot integrate it from zero to, to infinity. It, it, it goes to infinity. Now, this is a, an impossible result. This, this result is not correct. Um, on a per volume, um, we already showed the energy was per volume. Then we did a power density per unit area of the whole thing. Um, you have to be able to integrate it and get some sensible quantity on a per unit scale. So, does it, so what this means physically is that it doesn't matter how big the container is. It doesn't matter the size of the container um, that's, that the standing waves are in. And I'm talking about this guy here. It doesn't matter the size. And what it says is that if you look at a distribution of frequencies, that somehow the energy that this thing emits any of any size is infinite. And we know this result makes no sense. We've removed all the other factors that could have caused, caused this thing to go to infinity. I mean, if we scroll way back up here, look, if you, if you have the number of modes here and you make the volume infinite, well, guess what? You're going to get infinite energy. Okay, but we did that on a per volume basis. If you come here and say, well, what about lambda? If I make lambda zero, if I make lambda zero, then we're going to get a, an infinity in our, in our number of modes. Well, we did it on a per, a per wavelength basis. We did it on a per wavelength basis, or you can do it on a per frequency basis. Okay, so we removed all the ex these extraneous factors and clearly this integral still goes to infinity. So this is, uh, f you can forcibly represent this result um, and say that this actually goes to infinity when you integrate it. Okay, so I think D, I think it would be like something like this mathematically. Um, I think Einstein actually, actually wrote this result forcibly in, in this way. Um, but this is the this is the ultraviolet catastrophe, and if you think about everything we've done over the past few videos, this this demonstrates a giant hole in the understanding of physics. It it's it's um the end of the 1800s, and physicists at the time I think they're feeling pretty good. If you think about the contributions to chemistry, you think about the contributions to um, thermodynamics, right? Um, Maxwell's equations. I mean these are cornerstones of physics we see more more and more um, um, sophisticated versions sophi sophistications sophistications of classical mechanics of classical mechanics all of these things happened in the 1800s and then at the end of the century at the turn of the century of the 20th century um, they, they, we discover this result where you analyze this theoretical body and, and you do all of this, this rigorous sort of logic, this rigorous logical proof. And it says that this seemingly innocuous object that we started with, this seemingly innocuous object on a per unit basis when integrated over all wa wavelengths gives infinite energy. Okay, guys, so this, this result is obviously wrong. Um, what we are going to do in the next video, and maybe the last one in the series, is we are going to show Max Planck's resolution, which is simply substituting an energy function equals to n h nu, where n is number of photons, whatever that means, number of photons emitted. So it's an it's an incredible uh, leap, and this is a discrete. This is a discrete function. This is an incredible leap, um, but we will discuss it next time. And uh, it's, it'll be pretty exciting to see that the, the result is actually correct. So guys, please like and subscribe. Comment below if you like this stuff, and I will catch you next time.